guys and welcome back and today we get on with building the 170 second scale Supermarine Spitfire for the beginners build along. And just before we get started, I just wanted to acknowledge all of the new subscribers. There's been a lot of people come on board over the month of May in particular and uh, lots of additional views. And that's led to some new people making comments, which I really love. So thank you very much for the support. I've been trying to do one of these on a weekly basis since lockdown for us in Australia, which has probably been about eight or nine weeks. And just to fill in some time for you guys and also fills in some time for me as well in between doing some work. Hopefully it's uh, helping. So look, there's a lot of things going uh, horribly wrong in the world right now, and that's not a good thing at all. So I hope you guys are all taking care and looking after yourselves and staying safe and staying healthy. And hopefully there's a few of you building along with this. So before we crack into gluing bits of plastic together, we'll just do a couple of things in preparation that should make things easier for us along the way. So what do we do with an old kitchen sponge? And use an old one, guys. Don't take mum's new one. Plastic Chinese food container, you get rice in or sweet and sour chicken and some baking paper. And what we're going to do with these is to create a uh, what's called a wet palette. And that's really, really useful for acrylic paints. So paints that you can mix with water. So don't, don't think you can do this for enamels uh, or oils for that matter. And uh, that will help us control the thickness of the paint. We can mix water in it also gives the paint longevity in the plastic container so you can mix a color and quite often if it's sealed properly it'll be there hours later and sometimes i've had them last a couple of days just depends i guess on the environment so we cut the sponge into shape so that fits on the lid Now the lid's a little hard to get off, uh, which is what you want when you've got food in it, but not so much when you've got acrylic paints slopping around on your baking paper. So just trimming the edges away from the what's traditionally the bottom part of the container so it comes on and off easier. And now just giving that a sand to take off any rough sharp bits so we don't cut ourselves while we're using it. Then it's just time to cut the baking paper to shape and this just needs to sit on top of the sponge. So the sponge is wet, I, I should have made that clear. Well, that moisture trapped within the sealed container helps to keep the acrylic paints nice and fresh. So just a matter of cutting the baking paper out. And look, this, none of this stuff, none of it needs to be precise. You just want to be there or thereabouts. And I think what you'll find is if you're just getting started and you've not used a wet palette before and you now use one, you'll probably think it's worth investing the money in a more permanent solution and you can buy wet pallets pretty cheaply uh, from most hobby shops will have them online. Certainly I've had mine for a couple of years now and it's invaluable. So that fits on nicely. The water will hold it largely in shape. In a commercial wet pallet or one you buy from the shops, there's typically two pieces of wood that would lie on either side uh, to keep it in place. That's going to be a little bit sort of sloppy and cumbersome for us. 
So without thinking too hard about it, I'm just going to pin it in place and that should do the trick. I also like just to put a couple of drops of water on top of the baking paper. You don't have to do this. It's probably a reflection of my impatience more than anything else, but it certainly doesn't hurt either. And with that, we've actually built the first thing that we need to build for the Spitfire. And why are we building something when this is the build section of the project rather than the painting section? Because with the aircraft, you will be painting bits and pieces of them along the way during the build phase. So it's good to have it ready right from the get go. So next, we want to um, get a couple of thinner, soft sanding sticks. So I'm going to take one of the Infini sticks, and they look to be around about 16 or 18 millimetres wide. And I want to get three sticks out of this. So two thinner ones, and a medium one is the goal. Now, in, in spite of the fact that these are a soft, spongy sort of material in the middle, if you try and cut through it in one go, you'll send your ruler flying everywhere and probably take a finger off. These knives are super sharp. So it's better to make a number of just gentle scores along the way and slowly work your way through it. Patience in modelling is the absolute virtue. Putting a bit more pressure on now because I've got through that first piece of resistance and just cleaning it up and finishing it off now without the ruler so I've got a little bit more line of sight and I can see what's going on. So we've got a nice little thin stick there, help us get into some of the smaller places when we start to put the kit together. And then we've ended up with the three, one very thin, one a little bit less thin, and a medium. Are we there yet? Yes. Oh, finally. All right, so all that prep out of the way, we're up to stage one first section of the building and look, I like to have a look at the instructions in each step along the way in advance and then just colour in. So I'm going to use these pieces initially. These are the bits that I'll be looking for on the sprue to start with and that helps me just keep track of have I got everything done in each section. You don't have to do this, you don't have to do any of this, but it helps me to keep track of what's going on along the way. And then using the sprue cutters, so you've got a nice flat side on one side and they're quite sharp. So finding the piece and then going in and removing it. Now in some instances, and in this instance, pilot piece, I'm just taking it right off, nowhere near the actual figure itself. I'm giving myself plenty of room for margin there. Partly that's because this initial piece, I want to paint these before we do anything else. So I'm just being careful to make sure I've got a bit of leeway there in figuring out how I hold the piece. And then finally, I just check against the diagram that I've got all of the pieces that I need. And again, in this case, I'm just using the highlighter to check those off for myself. Also, make sure I've got the right configuration uh, just to be sure. And that is useful to do because on, my first, on the very first step, I've actually discovered in checking them off that I'd missed a piece uh, and not an insubstantial piece. So it's worth doing, uh, that way you're not going to get flustered when it comes to sticking things together and you go, oh my god, where's that piece? So I guess we should get some terminology sorted. So the sprue is the framework, the plastic runners, if you like, that the pieces are attached to, and that's where the plastic travels through the mould to create the parts. So that's not very useful for us, although I'll show you something a little bit later on where they are somewhat useful. And the other thing we talk about is the sprue gates, and that's the smaller attachment piece from the sprue to the actual figure. And these can be the bane of our lives because some of them are good, some of them are clumsy and fat, uh, some of them protrude over the detail of the figure. So you just need to be very careful, and that's why I tend to take off a bit of sprue so you can get a much closer look at the part and see how you're going to cut it off. And if you have to cut it off at an angle, perhaps, because there's a curve involved and there's no hard and fast rule. You just have to figure it out based on each individual piece. So now we have to clean up the part and it's a matter of coming in pretty close with the sprue cutters and just getting in as close as you feel comfortable to the figure. If there's a curve, like in the top of the shoulder there, I've stayed away from the figure a little bit and we can then file that extra piece down and I've kept that little arm on the side because for painting purposes that'll give us something to hold on to 
Now then it's a matter of using our hobby knife and you can take the next largest sort of pieces off where those sprue gates joined and just whittle those away a little bit. Now because this is a slightly larger piece that's left on the part, I'm going to very gently use the metal jeweler's file. And you notice just go in one direction, don't go crazy up and down, up and down, up and down. I think the files are designed to work best in just one direction, so very lightly just work it away slowly. And you can also scrape the seam line so where the two moulds come together there can be a little wine. And you need to give that a bit of a brush lightly. You don't have to go too hard at this. It all should come off pretty easily if you have a sharp knife. And then lucky last, we'll use one of our cut down Infini soft sanding sticks. And just to give them a little bit of a smooth up. And if there's any burry bits or bits that are sticking out, we can clean those up with the sharp blade as well. So the secret with cleanup, as with pretty much every other aspect of modeling, is patience. Take your time. Think about what you're doing. And when you're using these sharp blades to clean up, watch your fingers because it will cut through you before you even realize it. So it's just rinse and repeat, clean up all the rest of the parts for step one. And then because we're fundamentally building the pilot in the cockpit section, and that would be incredibly hard to paint if we put it into the two halves of the fuselage, we're going to start painting now. So we break out our wet palette, and I want to mix a couple of colors together because we've only got four colors. So I'm just going to mix a couple of the four colours together so we can get some different tones and variations on the basic four. So we whip out our humble Airfix branded brush and it's time to start painting. So the instructions will give you um, a lead onto the colours. Uh, back at the top of the seat is 29, which is our brown colour, as is the pilot's helmet. And there's green involved in here. As I said, using the wet palette, we'll mix up some different shades. I can't teach you how to paint through a video. All I can do is say that it's important to do these things before you glue the cockpit into the fuselage, otherwise it'll be a nightmare, as I said before, trying to do that. Again, it's take your time, and this will be modeling heresy, but uh, for beginners, our first crack at uh, putting a kit together, there's no right or wrong, and whatever color you make by blending these four together, I'm fine with you using it. So. Uh, it's about enjoyment, not about uh, winning competitions at this stage. You might go on to win competitions, but right now it's just about having fun and getting something that you like the look of. One of the things the wet palette will also do, it'll be keeping the acrylic paint somewhat thin. And again, rule of thumb, two or three thin coats is better than one big fat thick coat directly out of the pot. And again, this is all about the patience and just taking your time and building up the layers but it gives you a better result overall than just um, hooking it out of the pot first up and going with a great big glob of paint everywhere. Which is what we've all done when we first started building kits and painting them. So there's a nice little decal for the control panel and we just cut that out carefully with our hobby knife. Just let that soak in some normal cold water for about a minute. You can gently test with your brush to see if it's ready to come off the backing paper. And this is a time where you often need three hands, maybe even four, but to the best of your ability, you've got to slide it off onto the, generally in the location of where you want it. You can use your hobby knife to help position it or drag it across. You have to be super careful. But if again, if you're patient, you get it into the right spot. And so we'll have a look at a few close-ups of the finished component. So that's a lot of time spent talking about the first step, but I wanted to cover uh, a lot of the technique things as well. And we'll get a bit of a brisker clip along as we go through the remaining six stages. But uh, yeah, pretty happy it's come up okay. So stage two is just putting the propeller together which should be pretty straightforward. There's only three parts involved. And the colour for the nose cone, I'm not going to go with the black. I'm going to go with that duck egg, duck shell, grey, green, whatever it is. Nighty. That's the simplest way of putting it. Remember, as I said earlier, it's better to do a couple of thin coats than a really thick and gluggy coat, which leaves brush marks in the paint. Uh, a couple of thin coats will always look a little bit better, I think.
So step three is putting the two halves of the fuselage together and including the cockpit area and the propeller. And the propeller is fixed on with that little part there, A4, which will end up on the inside. So the instructions will show us that we need to paint the inside of the fuselage first. And now just getting the parts off again with my clippers, going in reasonably close. And then there'll be the normal cleanup of those two bits. So just cleaning up the sprue gates now. And that's again using the combination of the sharp hobby knife. And typically the soft sponge for these, because I get them pretty close to the edge of the actual part itself. And the metal one, which you can use, certainly there's instances where you'd need to use it, but that can do a little bit of damage if you're not very, very careful. Now we just want to do a test fit, make sure the two halves go together nicely and there's no glaring gaps anywhere, which seems to be the case, so we're happy with that. So the same process applies here, painting the interior, just made the green a little bit lighter by using some of that duck egg shell thing, whatever colour, 90 and thin coats and a couple of thin coats will get this done. Coming in with some black just to uh, pick out some of those lines. Just You're not going to see it anyway. You realise that when you're doing modelling you paint a lot of things that you're never going to see but it seems like it's a compulsion. You can't stop yourself from doing it. And then finally making up a really thin wash of the brown. So one drop of brown to probably half a dozen drops of water. And that's just to sort of marry everything up together and give it that sort of grimy, it's been in combat, dust and all the rest of the stuff. And again, as I said just before, really not going to see it, but uh, we know it's there, so we know we've done the right thing. And this is why dry fitting is so important because when I tried to close the two halves together with the cockpit parts in situ, it wasn't really making a good clean seal. And I thought initially it was that the little locator lugs weren't clear, but that it was a little bit worse than that. So I think it's my fault. I think in configuring the frame for the cockpit, I might not have pushed it together as close together as possible. Now, a pet hate of mine is um, modelers who will immediately go, ah, rubbish kit, it's got fit issues, and, you know, it's not my fault. I suspect it's, given everything else fitted really well, I suspect it's more likely to be my fault than it is the kit's fault. Not a huge disaster. It just means you need to do a little bit of extra work. So in your, if you're building this kit right now, you might not have any of these issues at all. But just forward of the canopy and aft, there's that little crack where it won't quite come together. And, and I think it's because it's a little bit too thick and the sides need to be shaved down a fraction, which we can easily do. And this is sometimes where the metal file is real handy. So I'm just going to thin out that back bulkhead there uh, and just being careful with the metal file to make sure I'm not impacting any other parts of the plastic. And it's really just a case of um, working your way through slowly test fit again, work your way through a little bit more if you need to, test fit again. Uh, and in the finish, fit it together quite well. So time to break out the Tamiya glue and being reasonably sparing, you don't have to go splashing it on great bulky globules. Join the two halves together. Sorry, I've got to be close to myself and away from the camera filming that. And then just squeeze it gently. It should click into place now. We fixed up the fit issues with the frame of the actual cockpit. And then if you haven't got uh, some of these little clamps and literally got eight of these from the two dollar shop for strangely enough two dollars Some big pegs would probably work just as well I like these because they've got the orange grippy things although that's not gripping all that well But that just helps everything stay in one place so it can set nicely
So you leave that to dry, and, and in this instance, I left it overnight, but that was only because of the timing. Um, but if you left it to dry for you know, 15 or 20 minutes, I think that'd be fine. And then just cleaning up the join line with the uh, soft, the Infini sanding stick. And that's just to get some of the excess glue that's out because the glue melts the plastic together. And uh, so you can get a little bit of glue out the top. You can get a little bit of melted plastic out the top. So you want to be very careful when you do this, though, because aircraft, and this one in particular, has got the sunken panel lines. So you'll do a little bit of damage to those panel lines by doing this cleanup. And we'll have a look at how we fix that in a second. So this is called rescribing, and look, there's lots of specialist tools you can buy to do this, but we're beginners, so all we've got is the back of our hobby knife. And really, it's just a matter of being super careful, taking your time, and just gently cleaning out or recreating that um, panel line, and removing a little bit of material if you need to, and joining it up with the line on the other side. So as long as you're careful, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And finally on this section, there's a bit of a gap there in the cockpit and the canopy. And that's no doubt part of the problem I had with the original fit. So what I'm doing now is making up a little bit of sprue goo. And that is just some cut up pieces of sprue. And uh, there's plenty of spare sprue once you've chopped all the bits off. And some of the Tamiya cement. And it's just a matter of letting the cement soften that to the point where it becomes quite malleable. I'm using a toothpick here as my tool and just working it into the crack, which is a bit hard to pick up, but it's going in there. And then just hit the other side and make sure it's all nice and tidy and you have in fact filled your gap. So on to step four, which is predominantly the wings. So the bottom and the top wings will come together. They've got the tail wings. <laughs> They're not wings, are they? And the rudder canopy. We won't be putting that on. Uh, we'll test fit it, but we won't be putting it on right now until after we've painted. Also, the instructions call for drilling two holes in the bottom. That's if you're going to put it on a stand. We're going to have ours sitting on its wheels. So we don't need to worry about drilling those two holes there. That can uh, be forgotten about. So after cutting and cleaning all the pieces off the sprue, it's just a matter of painting those areas as per the instructions that need to be painted before assembly. So we quick whiz through that. Just getting the second coat on now. And once that's all dry, just a matter of test fitting and gluing together. And all of these bits glued together beautifully. There was a perfect fit and no dramas at all. And now just putting the top of the wings on and dry fitting and it was just a perfect fit. It was fantastic. So getting the glue on, again, fairly sparing because we don't want a lot of glue squeezing out, which causes us a bit of repair work in sanding and then perhaps rescribing. And that's, that's just perfect. Awesome fit. Looks really good. Clamp it all together, let it dry. 
and then rinse and repeat for the other side. And now just gluing the tail wings on. I'm fairly on shaky ground with that terminology, but anyway. A little bit of glue, get any excess off. You, I, I just wipe it off with my finger. It's probably not healthy, but uh, it's effective. And just hold them in place for a few seconds so they don't go wandering off. Just check the attitude of them. Make sure they're looking like they're on the right angle and that they're snugly fitting against the fuselage so they haven't got some wonky wings. I always like to have a look at the end of it making sure that they're as symmetrical as possible and just adjusting while you can while the glue hasn't completely set so step five is putting on the undercarriage parts now we won't stick the wheels on at this stage because and also we won't stick that little air thing on the far left hand side at the bottom of the wing nor will we stick on the rear wheel and the reason for this is that if we stick them on now, by the time we finish manhandling it through painting, we will most certainly have broken one or two of these things off. So we'll paint them separately, and then once the model's fully painted, we'll attach them then and do whatever little bit of cleanup we might need to do around the um, glue joint. So just getting all the parts off for step five, and again taking a bit of sprue with them so I've got something to hang on to when I paint them. And as I said before, we'll just hang on to these until after the painting is finished altogether. And then we'll put them on because the least amount of handling with these little flimsy bits on, the better. And it comes with two sets of um, undercarriage. So one you can have up, so it's in flight. And it's got these ones with the wheels and there's a nice little touch here with the bottom of the wheels flattened so that's for the weight of the plane flattening them out and we just need to be really careful about that when we put the wheels on later that we um, don't get them in the wrong spot so now gluing on those undercarriage parts and just using a toothpick to get the smallest amount of glue that i can to deliver into the recesses in the bottom of the wings there that will accept the parts and again the brush is a bit too big the Tamiya's got lots of different glues, and Tamiya Extra Thin, which is one I typically use all the time, has got a very thin brush that would easily fit in there. But we're beginners, so we haven't got all the stuff that we might normally uh, aspire to have in the future. So that just keeps it from getting too out of control. And these things aren't actually going outside to fly, so you know they need to be well connected and, and solid. But you have to resist the temptation to smother them in glue because they just don't need it. I'm always looking over the model as well, so just then I noticed that uh, the right wing hadn't quite come together right at the front, so just worked a little bit of glue into that and waxed some clamps on it to fix it up. And now I'm just sort of looking at all the edges and joins and just doing a little bit of cleanup as I need to. Front edge of the wing here, pretty good, but uh, just got a few little rough spots off. I'm getting a bit of paint now on those other undercarriage parts that will stick on after the whole plane is painted. Just mixed a bit of black and that duck thing, who cares, 90, uh, to get a lighter grey. And then for the rims inside, and then the outside of black for the tyres. Now, I do apologise, I am slightly cheating here, because I'm using a tool that I didn't talk about before. It's a very small drill, and I just want to get a little tiny hole in here, because there'll be a wire from here to the back of the plane. And I'll just put a little notch in the place where that's meant to go and we'll do all that again. It'll be one of the last things we do after it's all painted.
And the very thin wire I'm going to use for this is something I discovered inside the charger of an Apple iPhone. And so I just split that open and there's a treasure trove of different little wires inside there. And I'm just going to use a single strand of the very thin wire again, all hooked up once we finish painting. So I finally went to test the canopy and it didn't quite fit. And this probably all throws back to my initial minor mess up on the cockpit. So just needed a little bit of work on it and just using the very soft sanding sponge because you don't want to take too much off certainly you wouldn't attack this with the metal file just work it away until you take it just enough and then here with the test fitting and look it was a super snug fit now that might be a real bonus in the finish because we probably won't have to glue it in place it'll just click into place so there are a couple of small gaps at the tree root base there so again we'll just revitalize our sprue goo with a little bit more Tamiya glue, give that time to melt up and then we'll be able to whack in and fill those and that should just be about the end of the construction. And that's it, so stage six and seven, we'll do that after the painting's done. So just have a look, this is as much of the building as uh, I want to do before the painting anyway. Lovely little kit to put together, uh, heaps of fun, really good fit, the only problems were problems caused by me. So look, I hope you've been following along, and if you are building the Spitfire as well, then I would love to see some pictures, so I'll put my email address in the comments below, and I'll run it across the screen here now. And uh, if you could just drop me an email uh, and attach a couple of pictures, that'd be awesome. And uh, if they come in time, which uh, before next weekend, I'll work in the next video. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it was a bit of fun. As always, really appreciate your time in taking to watch and look forward to reading your comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Like if you liked and click on the share button. And I will catch you in the next one, which will be the painting. Cheers.